Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And praise the Lord some more. Well, God bless you. And welcome, everybody, to another Wednesday Wisdom Word. This is Apostle Willard Saunders. And I'm just excited to be able to share with you one more time, amen, the, the word of the Lord and to share with you some of the things um, that God is putting in my spirit amen, to, to be able to help you to better and to grow and to prosper and to be everything that God has created you to be. That's the whole goal, is to be everything uh, that God has created you to be. So we bless the Lord for everybody, amen. Um, amen, so we bless the Lord for everybody tonight. Just thank God for everybody and for what you're doing and for, for how things are working out in your life. Come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in, Mary and Camille. And thank God for those of you that are watching the replay. Uh, for those of you that are watching the replay, uh, we bless the Lord for all of you tonight uh, in the name of the Lord. So I'm going to give you a few more minutes uh, to get on in here. And 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 we're just going to share some things. Um, amen. Amen. We're going to just share some things uh, with you tonight. And... Um, all right. Amen. We're going to share some things with you tonight. God bless you, Sean. God bless you, Vaughn. <laughs> Amen. I see everybody coming on in tonight. And again, my word is prepare. Your, your, my responsibility, rather, is to prepare. And your job is to share. Um, your job is to share. And so we want to make sure that you do that. Um, that you do what needs to be done. Amen. Share this with somebody. Uh, tag as many people as you possibly can. Uh, make sure that you do that uh, in the name of the Lord. Make sure that you do that. And so we thank God for all of you tonight. Amen. We're going to, we're going to go right into the word of the Lord. Um, prayerfully won't keep you too long. Um, I'm fighting for my strength tonight. Amen. Amen. I might be, I might be able to preach somewhere. I'm fighting for my strength. <laughs> I'm fighting to keep my strength against all the obstacles and against everything that faces us. Uh, sometimes it's difficult uh, to keep our strength, but I want to deal with that. And I want to deal with that tonight, deal with the reset. We're coming to the month of October and we're going to be dealing with a reset uh, as Elder Daniel said on Sunday, is shifting um, the power of a renewed mind, power of a changed or a renewed mind, a renewed mind, renewing of your strength, renewing of your mind. We're going to deal with that tonight. Amen. And, and throughout the entire month, um, I want you to get your Bibles open out to Psalms 37, because uh, we're going to talk a bit about the Psalms tonight and for the next few weeks, uh, dive deep into what they are. Uh, a lot of people say teaching the Psalms is kind of lightweight, uh, but no, there's a lot of meat there. And so we, we want to kind of go there and share some things with you. So get your Bibles open. Uh, the Psalms 37. We're going to give you a few other scriptures before that, but we're going to teach Bible tonight and kind of walk through, uh, walk through these scriptures and walk through some things um, for you uh, tonight. So we want, I just want everybody right now, uh, if you can, let me just get pulled this up real quick, real quick, real quick, make sure that I got it pulled up. <laughs> I'm telling you to pull it up. I got to make sure I got it pulled up. So I want to make sure I got it, uh, that, 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 that I got what I need here. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I got, I got it. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you and we praise you and we adore you. We thank you for how good you have been to us. God, you had literally uh, been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. And for that, we're grateful. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your kindness, for your patience, for your tolerance, for the consistency and the execution of that love. We ask, oh God, that you be with us now, open up our hearts and our minds and our understanding that we might be able to receive your word. Give me clarity of speech and your people clarity of hearing. Bless now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord to everybody. Just thank God for all of you. And I see so many people coming in from all, literally all over the country. And if you're on here for the first time, please let me know. And if you're outside of this Maryland area, again, please let me know. Let me know where you are. Let me know what's going on. And we're going to share some things. This month, we're dealing with reset. Reset, the power 
of a renewed mind, the power of a renewed or, amen, that says renewal mind, but it should say renewed mind uh, on my lower third. So, Willard, right, make sure you fix that, okay? Uh, make sure you fix that. Uh, it, it should be saying the power of a renewed mind, not renewal. But we thank the Lord for all of you tonight. And I want to go to the word of the Lord. We're going straight into the word. Uh, we're going to Romans chapter 12, verse number two. Romans chapter 12, um, verse number two. Romans chapter 12, verse number two. Um, it starts out in verse number one but with, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's in the King James Version of Romans 12 and 1. But Romans 12 and 2 in the NIV says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. All right. That means the world has a pattern. There is a way people think and do things. And what Paul is saying is don't do that. Don't, don't conform to the pattern and the way that things are being done just because it's normal for everybody else. But be transformed, right? Here we go. Be transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing or the changing or the regenerating, uh, putting new thoughts into your mind. It's what transforms you. You're transformed by what you allow yourselves to think. You know how, thank you, Holy Ghost. You know how we say we are what we eat? We also are, are, also are what we think. As a man thinketh, so is he. We are that. When we think down, we think depressed, we think negatively, then that's who we become. You know, we talked about low self-esteem sometime and, and that, that sort of thing. When we think badly about ourselves, then that's what we are. And there has to be a change of mind for anything to change. For anything to change, it has to start with your mind. It has to start with the way that you think. And this is just the foundation scripture for what we're going to go today. How you think, how you view things, how you see things, even with other people. We're going to deal with that today. How you view your position in life, your place in life, how you think about it. And I said it the other day that just because you think something doesn't mean it's right. That the way that you renew your mind is through prayer, going before God, and also through knowing the word of God. Knowing what the word of God says about you, for you, and to you. You got those three things? Knowing what the word of God says about you, for you, and to you. What is that word saying to you? What is that word speaking to me? And I renew my mind by, by, by the digestion of the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel it says, eat the whole roll. Eat the whole thing. I mean, get that word inside of you because when you don't, you are subject to whatever it is that you hear. You're subject to whatever comes to you. And if you don't have any way to counteract it and be able to say, no, that's not right, right? If you don't know something, you can't counteract to say, remember one time I taught you about having an agenda? I talked about having an agenda for your life, having an agenda, because I told you, if you don't have an agenda, you don't know what to say no to. You don't know what to say no to. Right. So if you don't know the word of God, you don't know what to reject. You don't know what to say. No, that's not right. No, that's not the will of God. No, that's not the word of God. You don't know. it. And so when someone comes or a thought comes to your mind or the enemy brings something to you, then you may be subject to it. I'm going to show you that in scripture simply because you have rejected. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It does not say that it's destroyed because of sin. Now, the lack of knowledge will lead to sin. It says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. God bless you, glory. Glitch you on here tonight. Because they reject knowledge. You reject what you could know. What you don't know will kill you. All right? So here it is. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. People in the world have a way of doing things. They got a way of making things happen. And it looks, that's where we're going to go today in, in Psalms 37. And it looks like they're prospering. 
And, and what it does is it becomes attractive to you to try to do things the way you see other people doing it and getting over and getting by. And you want to, Lord, what in the world's going with me? You know, Sister Gloria's on here today. One of our newest members just talked about how her money started getting messed up as soon as she gave her life to the Lord. I said, because before you were no threat to the devil, as soon as you make up your mind to follow the Lord, he's going to attack you and try to make you think you're doing the wrong thing. God bless you all the home. All right. So you don't want to be conformed to the pattern of the world. God bless you, Dr. Mackle. You don't want to be conformed to the pattern of the world, but you want your mind to be changed, transformed. All right. By the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and prove what God's will. God's will is for your life. His good, pleasing and perfect will. God's will is perfect for your life. It's pleasing. Amen. And it's good, which means good in that case in the Hebrew. I'm sorry. In the Greek means beneficial. It brings benefit to you and to others. When you do this, you live a life that's beneficial. He told Abraham, I'll make, I'll bless you and make you a blessing. So which means it's beneficial, not just to you, but to you and to others. It's beneficial to you and to others. That you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right. Now, let me give you a few more points here before we go to Psalms 37. And I'm get your notes out because I'm going to give you some things to write down tonight. Amen. Just information about the book of Psalms. I'm going to give you some background information tonight. So tonight's, tonight's lesson is going to be much more educational than probably spiritual, but it is still all spiritual. All right. Listen to this. The most important element in your walk with God and your success in life is how you think. Write that down. The most important element, the most important thing, because even the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost governs how you think. Even the most important element in your walk with God and your success in life is how you think. It governs everything. Because it governs everything, what do you think the first thing is the devil goes after? He goes after your mind in situations that arrives in life. The thief cometh not for to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Both things happen in the same situation. Whenever something comes up in your life, whenever something's going on in your life, the enemy's attacking your mind. That's what he did with Job, with Job's friends. And his wife, you might as well curse God and die. That was a mind game. That's what I should have called this lesson tonight, mind games. The enemy plays with your mind. Even his friends that came to talk to him got him wanting to curse God and die too. Good Joe Job said, I cursed the day that I was born. Right? It was all in his mind. Now, I admit the situations were hideous that Job had to face. I would never want to have to face what Job had to face. But his mind is where the attack was. Satan changed the mind of Eve. He changed, he got into her head. He got her to listen and he got into her head. So didn't God say, no, God didn't say that. You're going to be just like God, right? You're going to get this. You're going to have that. He played in her mind and made her believe that she was losing something. I want to share with you now. That's one of the greatest tricks of the enemy is to make you believe that you're losing something, that something that, that should be yours, or you see somebody else supposedly doing better than you or, or living better, and, and they're not saved, and they're not this, they're not the other, and he messes with your head. Say, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? All right? You know you need a man. There ain't no man in the, men in the church. Why don't you go out there and get you one? He's taking good care of you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Not saved, not a bit more saved than the man in the moon. And you walk down that road, and before you know it, you end up in destruction. All right? And here's the thing. I'm going to give you one more scripture. John 13 and 2. John 13 and 2. The evening meal uh, was in progress, and the devil, the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. 
How did he prompt them? I wish I was in a live class because I'd ask for answers. How did he prompt them? How did he do that? He did that by getting in his head. This Jesus is not who you think he is. He's not going to turn over Jerusalem and, and get Caesar out of office. He's not going to do anything that he said. So he got in his head. And when he got in Judas's head, Judas betrayed Jesus. And ultimately, he committed suicide. I mean, real suicide. Threw himself off of a hill. The Bible says he burst, his bowels burst open. Committed suicide. All because the enemy got into his head. Listen, you can't listen to everything and everybody. I even tell the saints of God, you can't listen to every preacher. You can't, you can't. My mama used to say, you can't eat from everybody's table. You just can't do that. That stuff will mess you up because after a while, you're so confused. What do you think has happened to all these QAnon people? QAnon people out there that believe in all these conspiracy theories and, and all this other stuff. Somebody's got in their head. The guy them believing that, that, that the ex-president is, is really the son of God. I saw a book like that. The enemy gets into their mind. And when he gets into your mind, he can take you anywhere he wants to. Look what he did with Eve. Look what he did with Judas. Those are just two examples in scriptures. Got him to go in a whole different direction than they would, should have gone. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, and I'm going to give you some outline on the, some summaries of the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms helps to keep your mind straight. That's why we read them. They actually were, lit, were musical songs that were to be sung. All right. And they're written. I don't want to go through all the Hebrew ways and alphabetical ways of which they're written because that's not really necessary. But they're written for comfort and instruction. The Book of Psalms is a collection of prayers, poems and hymns that focus. They focus the worship. They focus your thoughts on God in praise and adoration. OK, it's a book of prayers, psalms, and hymns that focuses the worshiper's thoughts on God in praise and adoration. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. All right? Part of this book was used as a hymnal in the worship services of ancient Israel. They actually sung them. If you watch the Queen's, um, the Queen's funeral, Queen Elizabeth's funeral, they did that. They actually sung the Psalms. They sung Psalms uh, 23 and other Psalms, Psalms 91. I was just blessed by it. They actually sung the Psalms. It was just, it just blessed my soul to hear them um, being sung. Okay. The musical heritage of the Psalms is demonstrating this title because that's what it means. Okay. The word Psalms comes from a Greek word, which means a song sung to the accompaniment of a musical instrument a song sung to accompany of a musical instrument. We know that David was a great musician. David didn't write all the songs. Asaph wrote some, Moses wrote some, uh, um, Solomon wrote some, different individuals wrote the songs. However, David is the primary uh, writer of the book of Psalms. He's the primary writer. And the book of Psalms, I'm giving you, this is a real Bible study tonight. It's, di it's divided up into five overall books. And I'm gonna give you that in a moment that, five overall books or five overall themes rather uh, um, that, that the book of Psalms, Psalms can be summed up in. Every, I don't have all the numbers for the books here, but everyone emphasizes a different, a different subject, right? Like Psalms one through one through Psalms 41, God beside us. The next book deals with God going before us. Then it deals with God around us then God above us and finally God among us. Now we're gonna deal with the first one, God beside us, God with us, God being with us. That's what it deals with. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He's with me, he's with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Okay, so. The main message of the book of Psalms, Psalms helps us. This, this is important. This is important. It helps us express ourselves to the Lord. The book is filled with words to pray and songs to sing. 
right? It reminds us we can lament, and this is important, and express our grief to God. <clears throat> we always say, I won't complain. But I'm going to tell you something. The book of Psalms is full of complaints. It's full of complaints. It's a lament to God, to let God know where you are. And I'm going to release you right now. Sometimes it's okay to tell God where you are. It's okay to, to, to let the Lord know, Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I'm bound. Lord, Lord, as the heart panteth after the water book, so panteth my soul after thee, oh God. Where are you? Don't act like you never had a moment in your life where you haven't wondered where is God. Where are you, God? I, I've been saying it, and I, I was telling uh, my wife the other day, and I really was feeling it because, uh, you know, I got the, the kidney stuff going on, and then I've had this cold that, that wouldn't leave me for the past two weeks. Thank God it wasn't COVID. You know, my taste was gone, appetite gone, losing weight, all kinds of stuff. And, and, and I'm thinking to myself, and I just said, Lord, I have my own personal lament. Lord, I'm just tired of being sick. I'm tired. I'm tired. I know you can help me. But it's not the book of Psalms allows you to lament, but it also brings you out of it. Help me, Holy Ghost. It allows you, it is important emotionally, right? That you lament, that you bring out something, but you can't stay in that place. You can't stay in your place of lament. You've got when you look at the book of Lamentations. When you book of the book of Lamentations, where, where, where Jeremiah is just crying about the state of Israel and what has happened and what God allowed to happen to Israel, he said, but then I bring this to my mind. Help me, Holy Ghost. He said, I bring something back to my mind that it was because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. He said, I bring this to mind. Therefore, I will have hope. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I got it now. He said, I bring this to mind. Even when I realize all that I'm going through and all that Israel has gone through, he said, I bring to mind, I bring to my mind, I renew my mind. Therefore, I have hope that it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail if not, they are renewed every morning. You go there, but you don't stay there. Jesus. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Cries Jesus in Psalms 22. Where are you, God? Where are you? I'm thirsting for you. And I realize at the end, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I know you're still with me. That will, Psalms 16 and 10. That will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will you suffer thine holy one to see corruption. But you will show me the path of life. For in your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So yeah, I feel it. I feel it. You feel it. You feel the loneliness. You feel what you're going through. That's right, Pastor Barbara. You just can't get stuck. You got to renew your mind. You got to shake yourself and get your mind together. I'm a perfect example of it. I have to shake myself almost every day. I didn't want to get out of the bed today. I didn't want to get, I didn't want to move today. Anybody have moments like that? I didn't want to move today. Didn't have to pick up my granddaughter. I guess if it wasn't for dialysis, I wouldn't have gotten out of the bed today. Just was feeling some kind of way. God, when will this be over? When, when, when will you heal me? Or when will you send me the right donor? Wondering, God, you sent donor after donor. I probably had 10 to 15 people try to go through to be donors and none of them worked. And then the ones that could work didn't do it. Amen. And I'm like, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? The Lord has to remind me. I'm with you. I'm with you. And then I'm going to go to Psalm 37 because this is where I, you, you get to. Because you start looking at what other people are doing. All right? You start looking at how other people go through. Psalms 37 is a wisdom psalm similar to the style of the book of Proverbs, all right? They con it contrasts the godly and the ungodly. Is, and, is, and what's going through, that contrast is explored in death, okay? Along with an exhortation to trust God. Wisdom is critical to the believer. Wisdom is the principal thing. It is critical 
to the believer. That's right out of the home. He's the lift of my head. Wisdom is the ability to properly apply knowledge, okay? And apply it in a manner that is pleasing to God. Wisdom instructs the believer to place God at the center of everything, all of life's choices, decisions, and pursuits, okay? So let's go to Psalms chapter 37, verse one. Verse number one, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. What am I trying to tell you? Don't pay attention to what other people are doing. Okay? Fret is translated from a Hebrew word referring to burning or heat. In contrast to anxiety or rage, believers should trust God. In other words, don't get in a rage. Don't get so hot. Don't get so burned up because you're looking at this one and you're looking at that one. All right. One of the worst things, I'm, I'm, I'm not a single person. I was single at one time, but I believe that one of the worst things that happens for single women is when another woman gets married. Mm -hmm. Like, Lord, when's my turn? When's my turn, Lord? And sometimes people can get enraged and get angry. God, I've been waiting on you. Well, I could say the same thing. Lord, so-and-so just got a transplant. So-and-so just got healed. So-and-so got, just got delivered. Where, where's my turn? The Lord says, don't worry about that. And especially for those that aren't saved, because it will appear to you that people that aren't saved are doing better than those that are saved. It will appear to you. It will seem that way. Right, we got this guy that used to be our president. It looks like he gets away with everything. I don't care what they do. It looks like, my God, every, every time we think we got they got him, they got something else. He, get, he slides through like a snake covered with oil. Help me, Holy Ghost. But I guarantee you, God will deal with that. Because it says they will soon be cut down. And I'm not coming against anything personally. I'm just telling you the word of the Lord. So you don't worry yourself about what's going on with other people. You don't worry yourself about what's going on in other ministries. You don't do that. Give me the next verse. The next verse. Okay. Trust in the Lord. That's the key. If I don't say anything else tonight, trust in the Lord. And do good. Do that which is right. Do good. Trust in the Lord. Delight themselves. Delight yourself in the Lord, as we'll see a little bit later. Commit your way to the Lord. Wait patiently for the Lord. Okay? The prosperity of the wicked lasts only a short time, whereas the Lord's blessings of the righteous last forever. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And I'm going to, I'm, going, I'm going to move right here. And he shall bring it to pass. You got to trust God for what you don't see. You got to trust God for what's hard to believe. You've got to trust God because read this word right there on that screen. Not he may bring it to pass. Not he possibly will bring it to pass. But he shall bring it to pass. And I hear the book of Isaiah saying, my word shall not return to me void. But it will accomplish everything that I send it to do. It shall come to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. That means people will see the glory and the righteousness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It shall come to pass. I want you to put on the screen, it's going to happen. It's with emphasis on going. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. I'm telling you right now, it is going to happen. He shall do it. It shall come to pass. I shall live and not die and declare the Lord, glory of the God. You're going to live to see it happen. It shall, it shall, it shall, it shall, it will come to pass. I don't know what you're waiting on. Charlene, I know what you believe in God for. I don't know what's going on in all of your lives, but it's going to happen. Whatever your, it is, it's going to happen. Whatever you're believing God for, it's going to happen. 
You just got to renew your mind with this thought. That's what I'm trying to do. The power of a renewed mind. I'm renewing my mind when I'm talking to you because I'm telling you right now, the stuff I'm going through is difficult. I don't judge according to anybody else's. You're, what you're going through is difficult too. And so I'm encouraging myself. Pastor Wicks left today or yesterday and, and, and went to Jamaica on a missions trip. One of the first missions trips I haven't been able to go with him on. And one and, and Sister Whitney Curry sent me a little inbox today, said, we miss you. Broke my heart. Said, we miss you. We miss you. And I knew what she was saying is that normally you would be here. Normally you would be a part of this. No, I can't go. Can't go. God. I got to do dialysis. And if I could go, I wouldn't be very much good to him. But I got to believe that God's got a plan. And I can't worry about that. Because it shall come to pass. Trust in the Lord and do good. Do what God calls you to do. Go on to the next verse. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Whew. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. Do you know how hard that is? Do you know how hard it is to just simply be at ease, be at rest on my soul? Do you know how hard it is when you're waiting on God to have your mind at ease? have your spirit at ease, to have your body at ease. The writer is saying, rest, rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Wait patiently. There's one thing to wait with anxiety. There's another thing to wait patiently. Wait patiently on God. He that shall come, the book of Hebrews chapter 10. But you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. He that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. For after you have suffered a while, then he'll strengthen you, establish you, and make you perfect. Rest in the Lord. If I don't give you anything else tonight, rest in the Lord. Wusa in God. God's got this. God has taken care of this. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about what you see others on your job and people that are just mean and nasty and clawing their way to the top. Don't worry about that. God's going to bring you out because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Don't worry about that. It might look like they're prospering, but that's only going to last for a moment. Amen. David points out that God is fully aware of, our, of the situations faced by the righteous. He is also aware of the seemingly unfair prosperity of the wicked. He knows, listen to this, he knows the wicked abuse the poor and needy and violently oppress the righteous. He assures his readers that God always takes care of his people and protects them. God always does it. Let's go a little bit further. We're going to jump off of this tonight. The next verse, the next verse, the next verse. All right, here's the key. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, let me get up here a little closer. Don't act like you haven't ever been angry with God. Don't act like you haven't been angry when somebody that you trained got the position, got the promotion. Somebody that came in after you, younger than you, and you got the promotion. And they got the promotion and you didn't. Don't act like you haven't ever felt that. Whatever the situation is, amen, anger is a normal human emotion. Right. That's why the Bible says be angry and sin not. That's when it says cease from anger. Don't continue to anger. It allows the fact that anger does come. And there are moments when you're going to be angry about your situation. It's even a part of grief. You're going to feel angry. See, thank you, Holy Ghost. So many people preach this gospel in this ministry in a way that's not human. 
It's not human. All right. Even Jesus was upset. He, I might preach the message a little while ago. Sometimes you got to turn over some tables. Even Jesus got upset. No, this is no. It's not going to happen. He weeped over Lazarus. He felt it. Right? Cease from anger. That means don't stay there. Don't live in an angry place. Don't continue to be angry. Sometimes you need to be frustrated about some things because frustration causes you to change some things. Right? Sometimes you don't change things unless you feel it. Unless you get angry enough or unless you just get tired of it, then it makes you change some things. That's why God lets you feel certain things, but don't stay there. That's why it says forsake wrath, forsake, give up your right that you think you have to feel a certain way. Give it up, because if you don't, it thank your Holy Ghost, it will poison your mind. Every one of us on here has a reason to be upset about something that has occurred in our lives. We got a reason to be, but we got a God that goes beyond that reason that we've got to trust that even we find ourselves in the fiery furnace, we've got to know that God is there with us. All right. Here's the reason. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Because when you get on that train, you start riding that train down the track about woe is me and this shouldn't happen and that shouldn't happen. Next thing, you're on a stupid train. You done done something, you've done something dumb. You've gotten out of the will of God. You've cussed somebody out. You got into a fight. Next thing you know, you're in jail somewhere. No. Everything is lawful is not expedient unto you. For the evildoers, here's what you got to understand. God is the God of vengeance. For evildoers shall be cut off. But look, look at this. This is where I'm going to end at today. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. In other words, the things, the goodness, and the things that God has for you, you will inherit it if you can wait on God. Okay? From God's perspective, from the world's perspective, evil people might seem like a tree with wide spreading branches. That's how they might seem. This is what the writer's talking about here. Something so large and so deeply rooted uh, can be intimidating. However, as David notes, this is merely an illusion compared to the power of God. Compared to what God can do. In David's own life, this is what he's writing about. He saw the fate of the rich. He saw the fate of the strong and those in authority who rejected God and godly wisdom. Okay? That once powerful tree, that person that you thought was so much, watch what happens. Watch what God does with them if they don't commit their lives to God. And at the end of the day, you can't. Now, you don't wish that. I'm going to tell you what my dad used to say to me. You don't wish evil on anybody. You don't wish hurt on anybody. You don't, you don't do that. You don't go wish it hurt on your boss. As a matter of fact, you ought to pray for them. Do good for them that despitefully use you. The Bible says in the book of Romans and in, he, and, 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 and Proverbs that you heap coals of fire upon their head. But you got to keep your mind together. And that's what this lesson is about. And I'm going to be dealing with all month. How to keep your mind together. Because if you focus too highly, on what you think is not going right in your life. I got one last word for you. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good. All things, even the things that seem not to be working and the unseen things, God is working for you behind the scenes. You got to fill your mind up with this. Fill your mind. I want y'all just bury yourselves in Psalms 37. And Psalm 73 is, is the partner to this. Psalm 73 is, the, is a partner to this. And, you know, I saw the, what the wicked did. Ah, it, they, they're partners in, 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 in here. And Psalm 73 written by Moses. Okay? I, I want you to just kind of bury yourselves. I'm just teaching Bible tonight. I want you to bury yourselves in this stuff. Right? Get the Hebrew... Um, um, translation of some of them, if you can. Those of you that are that far and that advanced, because you'll notice that Psalms 37, every verse is written in accordance with the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? It's going through the Hebrew alph alphabet as it's written. So it's laid out poetically. 
Uh, that's why I like the King James Version, because of the poetry that's still there in the King James Version. We still get the poetry. We still get the lyrical effect of it. OK, but I want you to get the understanding of the word. Renew your mind. That's why you need to study. Study to show yourself approved. Read this word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Bury yourself in your word. And when you do that, then you will renew your mind my god remind me god remind me of my destiny remind me that i'm fearfully and wonderfully made psalms 139 and your work is wonderful to me i know that full well remind me that god is my refuge and strength a very present help in the time of trouble remind me god that you are my light and my salvation lord is the strength of my life whom shall i be afraid Remind me, O oh God, remind me, O oh God, that I will see as the psalmist says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. Now may Israel say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. The Lord bless you all tonight. I thank you for being with me. I went a little different way. The Lord kind of, you will make it to your after. Yes, ma'am. Matilda, that is exactly right. Wanted to go a little while. I want to just share word with you tonight. Kind of dig it in, dig into this word and get you into the word of God. We got so much inspiration and no, and no intellect and no understanding of what God, that's what we got to do. You know, unfortunately, as, 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 as apostolics and Pentecostals, we are almost too inspirational. But we need to be informational. You need to apply some information to your inspiration. Right. Apply information to your inspiration. And when you do that, you'll find success in everything that you do in your life. I'm going to be praying for you guys tonight. I'm ready to go. Before we do, as we do every week, we're going to be asking you to sow. I've been noticing this financial attack that the enemy has been trying to bring upon the church and upon the people of God. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I speak your financial success and your financial blessings. For some of you will stop believing God and trusting God. That's nothing but a trick of the enemy. That's what he did with Eve. God had given her everything and told her, just give me one back, which was the tithe. And he made her take the tithe. He made her take the one thing that God told her, don't take. But Adam and Eve made both of them take it. And when they took it, they lost everything. They got kicked out. And guess who was left with it? The devil. There's one place where the Lord can bless you, and that is in your sacrifice, in your giving tonight. Amen. And those of you that are supposed to give exponentially, I need you to do that. Amen. There's some of you that should give in a large way tonight, and I'm not speaking to you what to give, but try to give at least a $50 offer if you can. And, and the very least you should show tonight is $10. That's everybody on this call. Everybody on this call tonight, the very least. But there are others of you that God's blessed and God speaking to you right now on what it is that you need to sow and how you need to give. God's going to open up some doors as you connect in obedience. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Do it right now. And if you do that, I promise you, God's going to bless you in ways and more ways than you can imagine. Though, Sheik, I'm glad to see you on here tonight. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, amen, that the enemy will, will, will take his hands off of your life. And I'm rebuking that stuff that the enemy is trying to put into your spirit. Amen. You are a child of God that's anointed by God, that has a great calling on your life. And I assure you that God's going to do everything he's promised to do in your life. Praying for you tonight. I want you all to keep me in prayer. Keep Apostle Weeks in prayer. I'm just going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. Thank you for this opportunity you've given me to come and to share with your people and for just the word that you've poured down in my spirit and the comfort that comes in these songs. We ask, oh God, that you bless these, your people. And especially I'm praying for Sister Dorshika tonight. I'm calling her name out because she's my child, your child. Amen. You've given me uh, to look over her and to the oversight over her life. And I'm praying for her right now that everything the enemy tries to do in her life, it will not work. Everything the devil tried, amen, God's going to make it fail. 
I said, everything that the devil tried, God made it fail in the name of Jesus. Now, God speak liberty and deliverance and renewed mind, renewed commitment, renewed faith, and a renewed walk with you to everyone that's on the call tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Amen. Sunday morning. Amen. On Friday, the women are going to see the woman king. It's going to be fan. Oh, the, really, the church is not the, it's sponsored by the women, but the church is going. Amen. And on Sunday morning, it's going to be an amazing time. And then right after Sunday morning service, then we're going to go to another church and have an amazing time. So I bless God for everybody tonight. Thank God for all of you that are here with us. As you can see, I'm slowing down a little bit and keep, keep praying for me. I, I need you to keep praying for me. Amen. I, I'm sharing with you some of what I'm dealing with so you can understand as you deal with it, what you're walking through, I'm walking through too. Amen. That God will work the miracle for me. I'm working, I'm believing God. As I pray for God to work a miracle in your life, I need you to pray for God to work a miracle in my life. And when we bind ourselves together, amen, when we come together, that's the power of we. When we do that, anything can happen. The Lord bless you. I love you so much. Thank you, Shamika. Amen. Thank you so much. I thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Camille. Thank you, Matilda Vaughn. All of you. You know how much I love all of you. I love you so much. And I thank God for all of you. Thank you, Stacy. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless you. Love you much. Remember, you're created for so much more. God bless you, everybody.